What's up guys, in this video, I wanna go through a simple example of solving a system of equations using substitution of simultaneous equations. Now, the simple advice that I usually give my students is whenever you have a coefficient of one or negative one, then you want to use substitution. Now, in this example, you could definitely use elimination as well, but I wanna focus on substitution because that's something I'm going to be expanding upon on further videos. So the main thing we gotta do is like, we have a lot of ones in front of our X, in front of our variables. We have one in front of this X, one in front of this X, and one in front of a negative Y. And one question I get all the time from students is like, how do you know what is going to be the easiest? And here's the way that I look at it. I could solve for x here, but then I'm gonna have to subtract a 3y and you know, I don't know, those are a little bit more numbers. Whereas in here, if I solve for x, all I gotta do is add the y. And then what I'm gonna have is a two plus y. And to me, two plus y is simpler than a six minus a three y. It could not be, right, when we actually get into the math. But the, what I wanna do is just try to identify like what is gonna be the easiest way to solve for something, right? It's gonna be easier to solve for x just by adding a y rather than subtracting an x and then dividing by negative one, right? That's not gonna make that really that appealing to be able to solve for there. So either way, it doesn't really matter. If you get confused, maybe just like work through it and just pick one. But in this example, I'm gonna go ahead and solve for x in the top equation. Okay, now you could definitely write this as a y plus two. It doesn't really matter, ladies and gentlemen. But the important thing is now we've isolated a variable. We've solved um, for x, okay? And again, you could solve for y, you could solve for x in the bottom equation. It doesn't matter. Don't let that hold you back. Now what we've done is we've solved for x in this top equation, right? Now what we're gonna do is we know the value of x is two plus y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of put parentheses around this and say, all right, if x is equal to two plus y, then in the second equation, I can replace this x with the parentheses two plus y. Okay, so now what I want you to be able to understand is taking the top equation and plugging it into the second equation, I've now created this third equation, right? If we were gonna say like this is equation one, this is equation two. Now I've taken this third equation that only has y's. Now I can combine my like terms and now go ahead and solve for y. Okay, so we solve for y. And this is a common mistake that students will make is they're like, all right, I'm done. Like I solved for the equation, right? We get so happy when we've been able to solve an equation that we kind of totally forget what exactly we're trying to do. When we're looking at a system of equations, what we're trying to do is find the values that are gonna make these two equations true for both x and y. Because you need to understand, these are what we call linear equations. And so if we were to graph linear equations over here, they, you know, I have no idea what these graphs look like. I'm not trying to mimic them. The important thing that I want you to understand is like they could not, they could be parallel, right? Where they don't intersect. That would be an example of having no solution. But when they do intersect, unless they're infinite many solutions, they're gonna intersect at one point. Right, And that one point is gonna have an X as well as a Y coordinate. So when we're looking at intersection lines, we're looking for that one X and Y. So right now we just solve for Y, right? We gotta go and find for X. Like you're not solving the systems of equations unless you solve for X as well as for Y. So, or A and B, depending on whatever your equation is. So in this example, we have Y is one. Now the so, such the cool thing about doing this when you using substitution is we've already set this equation equal to X. So if I know Y is now equal to one, if I wanna solve for X, all I simply need to do now is just go ahead and plug in a two plus what was Y was, which is equal to a one. So therefore X is now equal to a three. So Y equals one, X is equal to three. And if you wanted to use this as a coordinate point, then you could simply just write this as a three comma one. Now, overall, this example was easy. And I did that for a reason. But if you wanna be able to learn how to solve simultaneous equations that are not linear, then go and check out the next video I have for you here.